everybody it is officially as april 10th 2024 it is officially 10 calendar days out from weed christmas which um i somehow just realized it falls on the most epic palindrome day ever 4 20 2024 yeah yeah you can say it backwards same from the front and the back. Mm-hmm. It's like the eight one eight. But uh, 420, unfortunately, over the last couple of years, has fallen victim to, like everything else in current American culture, politic- politicization. Politicization. Uh, been a long morning. Politicizing everything, right? Uh, that's what everybody's doing, especially from the top down. All these politicians want to make everything political. And um, we just want to have a good time. Mm-hmm. This year is no different. And uh, right on time, we've got reports from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and two fellow Democrat senators, Ron Wyden and Cory Booker, soliciting support for a bill to legalize cannabis on the federal level. According to Politico's Paul Demko, the trio sent a letter to other elected officials on Capitol Hill for a bill to legalize uh, marijuana on the federal level. The reintroduction of the CAOA. The Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act, which was first introduced, y'all might remember, back in 2022, and it failed. It has not been confirmed that if they intend to call this one CAOA2, Electric Boogaloo, but if they don't, I believe that they're missing an opportunity. Uh, Sources say that the senators plan to file it by the end of this month, and I think, and they also think that it would be really, really, really cool if they got everybody's signature on it by 419 because they think everything's a fucking joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's what the letter said. It was circulated yesterday. An increasing number of Americans have made it clear at ballot boxes through their legislature and with their dollars that the war on drugs has failed and the federal government must respect the decision of these states that have chosen to legalize cannabis. Federal regulation is long overdue to ensure that cannabis products are as safe as possible to prevent access by children and adults younger than 21 and ensure that state and local jurisdictions have the resources they need to combat impaired driving. Market Watch's Steve Gelsey pointed out that to be sure, Democrats have uh, currently have a razor thin margin in the Senate and less sweeping measures, such as safe banking. Bill to open up the financial system to legal cannabis companies has never reached a full vote in the chamber after decades of kicking around Capitol Hill. Both parties, I might add, regardless of what revisionist history Jason Beck wants to tell us all, like he did yesterday. The truth. Um, <laughs> uh, but both parties have been failing, not just the Democrats here. Uh, so I'm glad that Steve Gelsey actually um, continued by saying that while legalization remains popular with a ma- uh, majority of Americans, Republicans have been much less supportive, especially lately. The House Republican Policy Committee has recommended against safe banking measure, which is aimed at helping legal cannabis companies conduct financial transactions. Gelsey also alluded to the fact that Governor Glenn Youngkin, a Republican governor from uh, Virginia, earlier this month vetoed a statewide measure that would have set up his state's first regulated marijuana marketplace. The letter from Schumer, Wyden, and Booker uh, concluded by saying federal law is needed to ensure that the tens of thousands of people harmed by the failed war on drugs, predominantly from communities of color, receive the justice they deserve after decades of over-criminalization. The federal government must catch up with the states and recognize that the prohibition of cannabis has stymied research into the effects of cannabis, made it easier for the illicit market to thrive, and ensnared thousands of people arrested for simple cannabis possession in the criminal justice system, end quote. Well, we all know that all those points are true. You know, another thing that we all know is that when it comes to cannabis legislation, none of these uh, politicians take it serious enough to do what actually needs to be done to get this shit passed. They make weak ass economic arguments about how much of a boon it'd be to mom and pop shops. They push cleverly worded statements to make us believe all the marijuana prisoners will be emancipated all at once like it's 1863 all over again and Joe Biden's the new Abe Lincoln. They show up to our rallies and do photo ops with white folks in dreadlocks dressed up in pot leaf print suits, ponchos and Birkenstocks every year. 
in over the last couple of years, they tease dropping bold legislative drafts on or around 420 so they can show up to the party and brag about all the shit that they've done to fight for our cause. I like to remind these senators that cannabis is a life si- uh, life-saving medicine. It just happens to be life-saving medicine that you can enjoy with social uh, in social environments without the fear of 99% of the side effects that FDA approved drugs released to the public daily come with. It's so my response to the tone deaf lawmakers who think it's cute to announce the latest version of whatever half-baked le- weed legislation that they know has no chance of passing on or around um, the one day of the year stoners just want to get stoned. This goes to both sides, Republicans and Democrats. Y'all want to point fingers at each other about who's at fault um, as the world burns all around us in the wake of their so-called leadership decisions. Cannabis is unique in the fact that it has, can, and will continue to bring folks together from all walks of life and from both sides of the aisle. Y'all want to show up on 420 to get high and kick it? Great. Come on with it. Believe this disingenuous legalization bullshit behind. One of the biggest buzzkills at any big weed event, especially on 420, is a lying ass square that hops in the cipher talking about all the cool shit they did before they got there and what they're finna do right after they leave. Ain't nobody got time for that, man. Don't be that person. And don't talk about it, be about it. If it's a good bill, kill the theatrics and just get it done. Do your job. I'm Rico Lameet, the dopest dad on the street for High Nine News. What y'all think about this? Well, 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 well. I mean, it sounds like a whole bunch of more lip service and grandstanding and people people caring more about their egos than they are actually caring about the will of the people is what mm-hmm. all I'm hearing. Sounds like uh, peanuts. Lucy's saying, come kick the football one more time. Mm-hmm. Right. How many mm-hmm. times we're going to fall for this shit? You need to direct this, go right at it directly or get off this hobby horse and leave it alone. Yeah. I'm hoping the courts help us out. My story's about today. So I just, I'm tired of listening to this bullshit. Mm-hmm. I, I, I appreciate Rico, you saying, you calling it out for what it is, right? Um, I, if you analyze what the, I mean, we all, the overview is what we all have been saying on this is it is all of those things. The ball is getting moved every time we run up to kick it. Mm -hmm. But you can see if you analyze this language of how they're talking now. Senator Schumer's starting to talk about how it will help everyone who has simple possession. Notice the key terminology that's Mm -hmm. being used in here now. Because now that's in line with what the Biden administration has been saying. Simple possession. Because they they did a sleight of hand to us where they said we were going to let you everybody out of prison and expunge their records if you were there for a nonviolent cannabis offense. Then it got shrunk down and subcategorized into simple possession because there's real, realistically, they know that's nobody. Yep. And you don't have to do anything for a simple possession. Mm. So if you analyze the language, you see that the, the Dems are all starting to go, fall in line. And, the, and the, the Republicans are too. This is not a Dem or Republican issue. Both of them have dropped the ball numerous times in the end zone on this wide open doing jumping jacks. Mm. So let, we can we can miss us with all the dim Republican pointing back and forth. We've both they both had the opportunities many times and missed them. I agree. But if you analyze the COA or CAO or whatever the whatever Schumer's calling it now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. C- the criminal so justice, the, the, the part that they're touting the most, the criminal justice section, is thin. It's so it's so thin that people have to like petition the court to get out. And it excludes certain cannabis violations and it, certain leadership roles and conspiracies and stuff, which federal government and, and federal prosecutors do all of the time in these situations. All of the time. They, they, they enhance and throw these leadership enhancements and these other things to get you to plead out to take a lesser sentence when those things maybe weren't even in the offense conduct. It's just a way that they do the charging. It's, a, it's part of the justice system now. 
So when you have these situations happen and you have a section of cannabis of offenders being excluded from a bill, that these senators show up to these 420 parties and do tout, oh, look what I'm doing. Well, are you also saying that I'm leaving 40% of your comrades in prison? You're not saying that part, are you? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, let's call it what it is. We're, yeah, you're pulling the ball away from us, but the ball's ugly no matter what anyway. It doesn't have any pig skin on it. It's like yarn and stuff. Like, where'd you guys get that ball? Because that's not one we even want to kick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel like this happens every few months. There's We have these three primary cannabis federal uh, bills, right? Safe, more, and CAOA or, or whatever the acronym is. Yeah. And every few months, we get some word that, oh, we're going to bring this bill to the floor for a vote. It's going to get close to passing and nothing happens. And then what do they do? A few weeks later, they start talking about one of the other bills. And that one is suddenly close to passing or getting out of committee. And then that one sits in committee again. And now I think we've done this in the past three weeks, safe more. And now this this third bill. <laughs> and these same three bills have been sitting in committee for years and years and years in, in Senate. So um at this point, I, any any news about any of these federal legalization bills, I kind of just take it with a grain of salt until mm -hmm. we see some actual action on it. Exactly. That's why I said it's all lip service. I'm glad that you agree with me on this, Soham. Look yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, too. It's hard to get excited about any of this because it always just seems to get to this certain point mm -hmm. and then stop. And then, like, something new comes. Yep. They're killing our the high, point. man. Mm -hmm. they're, they're killing our high. <laughs> Check out this other shiny thing over here. Yeah, man. Just yeah, non -stop, one after another. Let's not worry about sending all these guns and everything, and it, it is pretty much uh, sparking up a, a, a World War Three that we are doing. Let's just talk about, oh, y'all, we're going to be uh, producing this new bill, and we just might have legalization coming in a few months are you getting excited yeah are well, you guys excited exactly and on that it's, it's it's like it's like it's like the guy with the fishing pole and the dollar like oh you almost got it oh, yeah. you almost got it just like almost. that but on that we got to go to a commercial we're going to be right back <laughs> 